All right, everybody, and now for something completely different. We're going to jump to creating music and sound effects, and we're going to use an external tool to do it. Eventually, Nestmaker is going to have its own music composition tools built right into the tool. Uh, for right now, we are using a program called Famitracker, and uh, that works with, uh, that exports to a certain format, uh, and we use Gradual Games Sound Engine for playback. The uh, awesome Derek Andrews has allowed us to use his playback engine with Nestmaker, um, and our importer converts it to the format that that can read. Now, you could create a custom music engine, although it's a lot of work and crazy, and you'll tear your hair out and not like life a lot, but you could do that. That. And the way that I showed you how to edit the scripts, you could replace the, the music editing scripts or the music playback scripts with those. And then you could figure out your own way to create music and all that stuff. So that's totally possible. But uh, just like with a lot of other things with this tool, the goal is to make it sort of an easy sort of entryway. So um, Gradual Games Engine is not necessarily the, the most robust ever uh, playback engine. It's pretty freaking amazing, though. And uh, it's, it's very simple to use. It's very light. Um, and one of the drawbacks is it does not make use of all the features of uh, Famitracker for creating a NES game. So we want to talk about, you know, the things it does support, the things it doesn't support. Uh, and I'm just, basically what I'm going to show you is uh, just making an easy middle of the road songs, sound effects, and then loading them up and showing you how to make use of them. And we'll we'll continue on with this, uh, this little game that we have going on right here, this little uh, uh, clone of the plumber girlfriend gorilla game so anyway uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna open up family tracker which you can download uh for free and this is what it looks like and it really doesn't look too much like a musical tool so if you're used to like a piano roll if you're used to working with a midi sequencer or something like that this does not look like that and that presents a, somewhat of a challenge uh, for somebody who's a, a who's a musician. If you've never composed music, maybe this will actually be easier for you. I'm not sure. But our goal is to create a tool that actually looks and feels a little bit more like uh, a composition tool that if you're a musician, you'd be familiar with. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to create some instruments. So I can actually create a new instrument. And I'm just going to call this music uh, melody or something like that. All right. Now this instrument right now, uh, there's a bunch of different things that I can affect with the the instrument. Some of these are non-functional. Some of these function a little bit weird uh, or have particulars to them. We're going to stay really vanilla and really basic. I'm going to make a sound that could be used for a melody. And uh, so what I'm going to do for, I need to give it a volume. I can give it what's called a volume envelope. Um, and I'm going to select the next empty slot for a volume envelope. And I'm going to just stretch it out like this, maybe to 24. And I'm going to, and I can actually set the volume and I can create a volume envelope. So if I play like that and I press a note, you can see what happens, right? If I do this instead, I'll get this. All right, I get that like backwards reverb effect. If I just had it steady, Right, so maybe I want something that decays a little bit, so I'll do that kind of thing. Now I've got a MIDI keyboard hooked up, so I can actually play. Uh, I can actually play it on that keyboard, which makes it a little bit easier for me since I do play a little bit keyboard. But you can actually do all the uh, Family Tracker stuff on your computer keyboard if you want. Uh, feel free to do that. Um, another thing that you can adjust is the duty and the noise. And for a melody, a lot of times I like to put this on that second duty. It's it sounds very Ness, you know. It's that it's that opening haunting uh, instrument from the opening of Legend of Zelda. That kind of sound. That it's a rounder sound versus that more of a clavy sound. So um, for a melody, a lot of times I'll use this. And, and sometimes I'll make the volume envelope stretch out a lot farther. It just depends on what kind of melody I'm trying to create. I might do this kind of thing. I might even make multiple instruments um, that, you know, one decays and one doesn't. So I can play. Yeah, let's, let's, let's stick with that. So this is my melody instrument. And I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to close this out. And I've got a melody instrument. 
And so now I can come over here and these are the channels that the Nest plays music back unless you had a special sound chip, which Nest Maker doesn't natively support. So uh, unless you wanted to write your own mappers and things like that, we're going to stick with what Nest Maker naturally supports. Um, it uses two pulse waves, a triangle wave and a noise channel. As far as DCP, uh, DPCM samples, don't worry about that right now. It's a whole other can of worms. You can read a lot about it on the on the frequently asked questions and in the forums, people talking about it. Yes, it is totally possible for uh, even Gradual Games Sound Engine to use samples. I'd recommend it against it. Uh, there's a million reasons why I don't want to get into it right now because I want to actually show you how to use the tool and get something working. So what we're going to do is we can put it in record mode and I'm going to just thumb notes in. Um, and then I'll put in, you know. Which gives, and now I can hit the enter button. You know. Um, and I'm just, I'm just literally. Using the arrow keys. Okay, so now I got a little melody going right there. Um, it actually sounds more like a sound effect, but okay. Uh, maybe I'll I'll continue on with that, and I'll go. Uh, oops. So I messed that up. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to delete it. That should be right here. And notice I'm putting them on the grid lines. These are basically how you can tell where your quarter note or your eighth note or your sixteenth note is. Uh, it should be pretty easy to understand what's happening right here. If you put the notes closer together, they, they appear closer together. Even if you're not a musician, you can kind of understand that. Let's see, let's go down. So I've got a little cheesy melody there. So what I could do is I could, let's add a second instrument here. So I'm going to add an instrument. Um, I'm going to add a new instrument. And in this new instrument, I'm going to make sure that for my volume, I select the next empty slot. And I'm going to, I'm going to make another sort of, I'm going to make a, like a very short clav. So that's got kind of this sound. Uh, I've actually got it in record mode right now, so I actually just recorded those notes. I'm going to turn it off record mode. Um, and now, you know, really quick, clavy kind of sound. I'm not even going to touch the the, uh, the duty or the noise. Um, I'm just going to use that. And so now it's going to go. I'm going to, um, let's see. Back in record. this being a high I don't know. whatever I'm not gonna spend much time making music I just kind of want to show you guys how this works um, so I made two different instruments now I can use either of these instruments on the other channel so for instance if I wanted this melody to ring out here these are both the square waves they both use the same uh, type of sound channel so I'll get an identical sound so if I want a harmonizing note like that's an F so let me do a G sharp here so now you know these two notes will play together and you could hear that those are the same notes. Um, maybe I just want this part to be the other. Let's see. So. Uh, uh, 
So I'm just harmonizing. Right. So um, this uh, this was actually using that first melody on the second track, and you know, vice versa. I could do the the new instrument here. I'll, I'll name this Clav. Um, I could put this over here, da, 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 and I could um, use the Clav over here. So like G and then and then A. And So you see what happened, it did a stop because it hit that next note, but it played this note, then this note, then this note, then this note right here. Um, and you can see uh, what instrument is being played right here. So this was playing instrument zero, this was playing instrument one, this is playing instrument zero, this is playing instrument one. So we had that 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 nice warm sound and the clavy sound and the warm sound and the clavy sound again. Um, so now what I'll do is I need, I'm going to make a bass note and I could actually use these. I, I don't have to make a separate instrument as a bass note. I could, I could just use these. The triangle wave is usually what people are using for bass and it's a, it's a big full tone. You'll recognize it as soon as you sort of hear it. Um, I'm going to turn record off and just play it. So you definitely recognize that as like being a very nest centric sound. It's usually used as that bass, that bottom end. Um, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just do that and we're going to go, I'm going to record and we're going to go, I'm just going to follow the other line because I don't feel like doing anything more interesting than that right now. So you get the idea. Um, so now I want to do drums. And this is where I might want to create another instrument specifically for drums. And with this instrument, I'm going to definitely use the volume. Select the next empty slot. And I want to use the volume. And this, we're going to use the noise channel for this. I want really quick attacks um, and really quick decays. Um, and this is going to be, uh, again, for my noise channel. And I want that to be all there we go. Now I got zero. And so now I'll look for instruments that sound like drums. Oops. I forgot that I was in record mode right there. Let's turn that off. So let me find instruments. Uh, let me find notes that'll be good for drums. So that's almost, that's a hi-hat maybe. That could be a kick drum. Maybe that's a snare. So like... Right, that sounds kind of like a uh, 808 kit, if you know what that is. Uh, old hip hop reference there. So let me go ahead and throw in my kicks here. Dun, cha, dun, dun. You know, and what I could now do is like, okay, that's the bass, basis. Um, I'm gonna use a hi hat in the middle here. Nope, definitely not a hi hat. Um, yeah. So right in these empty spaces, and now it'll have, it'll sound like I'm hitting the hi-hat in every beat. Now it sounds like a rock beat that's going. So I'm going to copy that, control C, and I'm going to go here, control V, control V, control V, and so now. I would obviously make this a lot more interesting. I do want to make this shorter, though. I want this to just like bop and bop off before it gets to that next note. So right after it, uh, if I go to module, mod, uh, I'm sorry, not module properties. If I go to da, 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 configuration, um, I can see that a note cut in mine is used by the, the one key on my keyboard. So I can use a one key right here, and it cuts the note right there. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call this instrument drums. That's fine, just so I know what it is. I'm going to call this drums. So now I have, you know, a, a kind of a song here, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm going to go to Module, Properties, 
And I've got a new song. I'm going to rename this My Dumb Song. Hit OK. And in fact, I'm now going to add to that module. And I'm going to make a sound effect. Now, sound effect. Now, when you're making a sound effect for Nest Maker, you want to start it with the suffix SFX underscore. And that's how when it imports, it knows the difference between a sound effect and a song. So I'm going to make a sound effect for, uh, I don't know, sound. I don't even know what this is going to be a sound effect for yet. Uh, I'm going to make a sound effect sound. I want like a, a, a sound that sort of shifts pitch a little bit. Um, so maybe like a jump. Let, yeah, let's, why don't we do a jump sound? I'm going to make, I'm going to rename this. Hold on. Properties, module properties. I'm going to name this guy SFX. I'll call it jumper. So we know it's our, ours and not the one that comes default with Nest Maker. So uh, SFX jumper. And I'm going to need a new instrument for this. So I'm going to create a new instrument. Uh, I'm going to use the volume. I'm going to make select a new slot. I'm going to use volume and um, turn off record so I can. What I want to do is I want the pitch to go, Loo! you know, like a, so really quick volume that so a couple, just a couple spots of volume like that. And the last one will be all the way out. And now what I want to do is I want to activate pitch and turn on pitch. And I want to. I had eight spaces for volume, so I'm going to sort of mess with pitch over those eight spaces too. And if I go up an octave, up an octave, if I go, so about there, like that kind of sounds like a jump. And I could mess with my duty and noise envelope too if, uh, if I thought that, uh, you know, maybe. Almost sounds like Mario shooting, but let's 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 use that as a, as our jump. Let's just say, okay, we're gonna use it. So okay, so we'll use that as our jump, and I'll hit the record button now. What we've noticed is there have been some sound effects that have given uh, users trouble, and the coincidence is they all seem to have something on the pulse one wave, and we don't know if it's some memory drain or something like that. We're just going to avoid using pulse one for now. Um, go ahead and use pulse two. It's it's usually not that bad of an idea anyway in practice because usually your song's most important melodies are happening on the pulse one channel, and this sound effect isn't playing over the top of the music. It's actually overtaking the music. If you ever go back and you actually listen to a, a game on the NES, you're going to notice that when a sound effect plays, that channel in a lot of cases disappears uh, from the actual instruments that are being played for the soundtrack. Best example I can think of this, play The Legend of Zelda level 9. There's You can go into one of the rooms and all of a sudden the melody completely drops out because the sound effect overrode it and now it's gone. Like It just doesn't play anymore. Um, but anyway, so let's, let's just add uh, the jump sound here. So I'm going to hit record. And I'm going to name my instrument so I know that this uh, jump, uh, pitch, SFX. Great. And I'm going to hit record. And, oops, I turned off record. I'm going to do this. So now i got two notes there. I don't want two notes. I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. So that's going to be the sound for when I jump now. Awesome. So let's say that we're happy with this. We've got a song and we've got a sound effect. You can make a bunch of sound effects. You can make a bunch of songs. I think um, by default, you're limited to 64 uh, sound effects imported. You can actually get more than that. I think you can get 128. It won't break it, but there's no way to export that information. You have to, you'd have to manually do it in code, and it's a little bit of a pain to sort of uh, notch those together. 64 sound effects is a lot of sound effects for an S game. So uh, just be creative with your use, and I would say stick to under under that number. Now, you know, save your file or whatever, but when we got it in a, in a way that we as we want to use it, we want to bring it into our game, go to File, Save as, I'm sorry, that's that's to save it. <laughs> when we want to get it to a file that we want to actually import into NestMaker, go to File, Export Test. Export Text with an X. And I'm going to just put this on my desktop for right now, and I'm going to call it Dumb Song Text File. All right. So um, on my desktop now, I've got this Dumb Song Text File, and if I open it up, it's a, it's, it's, this is what, um, 
this is the a Femi Tracker text file essentially. I can actually also import this back into uh, Femi Tracker, and this is what Gradual Games interpreter reads, um, or our version of it anyway, uh, reads this data and then and then turns it into the data that our engine needs for our play for the Gradual Games engine playback. So it's really easy now to import this into my game. All I have to do is where it says. Um, sound and where it says music and sound effects. Notice they're both empty right now. If I right click on sound, I can import Femi Tracker text. Go to my desktop where I saved it, and there it is, dumb song text file. And you'll see my dumb song and jumper now appear. Okay, cool. So let's actually make them work in this in the game. And sound effect, this song's already gonna play because it's default it defaulted to song zero. So if I go to my room, if I go to my screen and I go to my screen info, you're gonna see it automatically defaults to song, the first song on the list, which is song, dumb song. But now let's affect the sound effect. So if I click on SFX, I get this list right here. And you see that it's a, a, a bunch, some of these turned into uh, jumper already because they were already set to the default zero sound effect, which means that they're now, just like the, sound, the song, they're defaulting to whatever's in that zero slot. Um, and I can change those by coming over here. Oops, by coming over here. So if I had more sound effects, these are constants. These are sound effects that this particular engine was set up to need, and they need to be defined, otherwise it's gonna crash. When it gets there, like if you set up a module and you said, play the shooting sound, and you never set up a shooting sound, it's gonna crash because it's gonna say, hey, I don't know what the shooting sound is. By default, if you see unknown, it's gonna default to whatever the zero sound effect is. So right now, every sound effect in this game is gonna be that jumper sound effect. But what we're most curious about is to hear if it happens when I jump. And that's not something that you set up. That's in the module. That's when you press the button. And we're gonna look at how you can actually act that when we talk about um, variables and constants and macros, and we're gonna talk about how you can get into the code and play sounds. But for right now, it are, we know that this, this is called when I press the jump button, and right now it's gonna call my sound effect jumper, which it, it didn't do before. It didn't have any sounds, loaded just had empty sound effects. So that's really all there is to it is import the music, import the sound effects, and then I could set it. So like if I wanted hurting the player to make this sound, whatever other sounds I created, I could select that. And if I wanted uh, getting an item, I would select the coin sound or, you know, whatever. So now if I play my game, let's hear if our cool music and sound effect are in the game now. Awesome. And jumping, there it is. It's just hypnotic, isn't it? All right. So anyway, that's a really quick tutorial on how to use Fami Tracker and how to import songs, uh, how to export into a text file and import that text file into Nestmaker so that you can make use of it. There are obviously way better tutorials on how to use Fami Tracker, how to make cool instruments. I hope you guys start sharing instruments and stuff like that. Um, the people who have made music for our for our beta engine and stuff like that. Oh my God, some of the stuff is amazing. And I don't even know how they did it. As a musician, mad props to those people. So there's definitely better if you want to get on Google and look up Femi Tracker. But what you want to do is make sure that it's conforming to what Gradual Games Sound Engine needs. And if you Google Gradual Games Sound Engine, you'll see a page devoted to its particulars. So so anyway, with uh, that's that's it for the uh, the this little music demo here with Fami Tracker and I just want to I'd love to start seeing some of you guys creating custom music and learning this and, and and doing cool stuff with it and as soon as you do we will have it'll become moot because we will have our own uh, uh, music composition tools in in Nest Maker themselves so anyway hope you enjoyed and we're going to continue on looking at some other stuff real soon <laughs>